So we've now established what is possible and what is not possible if you is to meet the constraints. How do we find the best combination that produces the maximum profit? We said there were seven steps. We followed the first five. So now let's do the other two. Six. We'll discover that the optimum is one of the intersection points in the feasible area. We need to evaluate these to solve for the maximum or minimum. In this greenhouse, we'll be looking for a maximum because we're looking for maximum profit. And our last step will be to check that the final answer makes sense as a solution to the original problem. Are we sure that there isn't some other combination of lettuces and tomatoes that would make more profit while meeting the constraint? We can now proceed to decide which is the optimum combination of tomatoes and lettuces for our grower. So far, we've established the objective function, we've worked out the constraints, and we've graphed them. And we've labelled as A, B, C and D the points which border the feasible region. Each of these points identifies the intersection of two of the constraints. And note that in this particular example, the first constraint doesn't actually form one of the boundaries of the feasible region. But that simply means that we can ignore this constraint when we're looking for the point of maximum profit. So let's have a look now at our four points that we're interested in, point A, point B, point C, and point D, to see which of them is going to maximize profits for our tomato grower. Let's consider point A, and we can work out how much profit he'll make if he chooses point A by plugging each of these coordinates into the objective function. The objective function is 6.25L plus 20T. So if L is equal to zero and T is equal to 25, then we have 6.25 times zero plus 20 times 25 equals 500. So that's the amount of profit if he only produces tomatoes, doesn't go into the production of lettuce. But we can't be sure that that's the best unless we check points B, C, and D. And if you check those points in the same way that we've just done, that is to say, plug each of the appropriate coordinates into the objective function, we find that at point B, he makes £462.50 profit. At point C, £302.50 profit. And at point D, £240 of profit. So this confirms that our tomato grower will maximise profits if he continues to stick to his policy of only growing tomatoes. And it's the use of linear programming techniques that has enabled us to solve this economic problem for this producer and come to this rational conclusion which enables him to maximise profits.